okay, 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 okay. Uh, all right, so the next one is right here, actually. Let's go up there and see what Tainari has to do with this event. Yeah, that was a dangerous teleport. Alright, didn't call it says Summer Sea has been pretty lively lately. Aren't you even a little curious? Yeah, not really. <laughs> Come on. I don't be so cold. Show Prime your passion. Your passion. You can just think of it as accompanying Paimon to the party, okay? Okay, okay, Paimon, I'll be your chaperone. Then let's go see what's going on. Uh, for first stop, maybe start with the academia. That's where all the info is, after all. Um, I don't know if current info is usually just. You know, like. a third center to. search information booth. Mm. Yeah, first up. There's a bunch of people in this event. So nobody will be voiced in this, this, this quest. Look, that's Faris over there. Do you think we should ask? Hmm. Uh, even just glancing at the boring records gives me flashbacks to how awful that book was. How irritating. Farzan, what are you doing talking to yourself over here? I'm Madame Farzan after all. It's not out of place for me to mow things over out loud, wouldn't you say? But in this case... Uh, never mind, forget about it. Why did two of you suddenly decide to drop by? Well, uh, about that, we heard something about party and you didn't want to miss out. How did it say it was a party, did she? Uh, Kali told us that Samara is the place to be now. Apparently, tons of interesting things are happening. So we thought we'd ask around. Any idea what she was talking about? Interesting things. What might Kali find interesting? The nurse still is getting so fluffed up like a buff tumbleweed. Or Sino climbing a tree and getting his hood caught on a branch. And that thing on his head is called a hood. Whoa, would we really miss all that? Seriously, nobody thought to tell me. Still, she said there was something big everyone's been talking about. Can you think of anything slightly more significant? Significant. Oh, then she said that Tainari was doing something kind of important. More significant. Ah, is something the matter, madam? Uh, well. Uh, now that you mention it, it must be what I think it is. Recently, rumors have been going around about a certain book. Uh, that's a classic horror story opening. Why? She just said a book. It's not some kind of forbidden tome or anything like that, is it? Forbidden tome? Huh. As far as I'm concerned, it might as well be. Tell me, have you ever read one of those really, really, really bad written detective novels. Um, I don't think I have. Unfor I unfortunately did. Tell me exactly how bad it was. Uh, let this primal. For example, the type where you start off th thinking it's a Lux Room murder mystery, but it actually turns out that the whole building was just moved. That's right. Or it's supposed to be based on pure reasoning and logical deduction, but in the end it turns out that the culprit has some kind of superpower. Exactly. Or it, it starts out super serious, but in the second half it just reveals that everyone lost their memories out of the blue. Or it's set in a mountain village in the middle of a snowstorm, and the police officer who's being portrayed as a serious figure throughout the whole story suddenly turns out to be the murderer. 
without even the slightest hint of foreshadowing. You're both being way too specific. You will find half the crime novelists in the valley if you keep going. Uh, my apologies. I let myself get a bit carried away there for a moment. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I did borrow a book like that a few days past. So you borrowed a badly written book, but that happens to be the that happens to the best of us. Uh, that's the problem. Blizzard swept mountains, villages, superpowers, police officers turned out to be criminals. This book had it all and more. Reading was a tough amount of to torture. And despite how complicated it was, it wasn't engaging in the slightest. But there have been all sorts of rumors circulating about this book because the strange marks brown over the, all the pages. People are saying that it must be concealing secrets. Do you think there's treasure involved? I'm not sure, but there must be many who believe so. Not only have more and more people been borrowing it, but they've all been specifically asking for the market up copy. Like, uh, have you borrowed it too? Yes, I have. As you well know, I am a scholar, so it's only natural to have a bit of curiosity. So just what secrets does the book at the center of the rumors actually hold? I have to carefully from the start to finish, most of the marks are circles, but the beginning and end points of each stroke differs, as does the color of the ink used. Most importantly, all the names of people in the book have been circled. Not only that, many of them are adapted from famous figures in Sumer's history. Some speculate that these marks must have been left by different scholars over the years, each researching the book's secrets, each searching for a name they believed in. Others believe that they are a kind of notation made by different people belonging to the same organization, and that the names circled are their code names. Still, others think that it is some kind of encryption cipher. But even after finishing it, I came no closer to uncovering the mystery. Not only has reading, was reading it a complete waste of my time, but sheer absurdity of the sh shoddy excuse for a plus several times over. You, I was so angry that I returned the book immediately, and when I came to the house of Dana today, I found lots of people skulking around. I suppose that's all still looking for that thing. I suppose they're all still looking for that thing. No wonder it's on out like that. I'm almost guessing you won't be borrowing any more detective novels anytime soon. Indeed, Paimon, it is surely the two of you must understand how I feel. Yes, I do. The worry, madam, I feel your frustration. What's the book called? We'll borrow it and take a look ourselves. I don't want to read a long, boring book. It's called Reasoning Knows Not Time of Day. But suspense always follows a blizzard. You sure it's a detective novel? Sounds more like the title of a light novel. Tell me about it. Anyway, read it at your own risk. It truly is unbearably boring. Wasn't I supposed to meet Arnari that he's doing something around here? You want to know what kind of books I like? The inspector is just so broad, I don't know where to start. I hope I just meet Ainari and he tells me about the book instead of having to read it. Yeah, I think this actually has no connection to the main event. It's just. They didn't know where to put it, maybe. There's so many books with long titles here. Paimon, let Paimon have a look. Working hard and vacationing harder. What the heck? The Atlas of Wearing Forest Dwelling Species Professional Edition. The. We don't see it should be at the right uh, section. The Art of the Construction of Coffee Machines, 
who exactly read this reads this secrets of the elemental sciences the book check even says expert approved the former sage cyrus praises this as an excellent entry-level book and this one a compilation of a summary of common basic grammar rules for rare languages of ancient desert people uh, now famous this is just so so many words come on Paimon, you can learn 20 different uh, is that Layla over there? I just ask her. She may know something. You know, Spyro has been so long. Uh, I'm still a bit tired. Didn't sleep well last night. Mm, I was reading a novel, so I stayed up late. It wasn't the detective now that everyone's been talking about, was it? The one, uh, the super long name. Uh, uh, no, if you're talking about reasoning, no, it's not time of day. But suspense always follows a, uh, follows a research. Alright, yes, no, it wasn't the one. Madame Ferguson said it was really dull, so I don't didn't borrow it. Oh, so you're not that interested in the book's secrets. I haven't been able to keep up with my own work, even though I'm up late all the time these days. But way more people have been interested in the book than I ever imagined. Seven or eight in a single morning. I feel like a living signboard sitting here like this. Kave asked me the same question, uh, so he must be looking for two. He was even hiding behind a ladder before, looking for something. He looks really embarrassed. Searching for something, hiding behind a ladder. He must be after Mora. That's gonna be it. So he can hurry up and pay off his debts too. Wait, no, no. Let's just pretend Paimon didn't say anything. Layla, what? It's a secret that he's only money. Uh, Layla, you are really sleepy, aren't right? You must be dreaming this conversation. <laughs> I didn't really get it anyway. But if you say so, it's a dream. Thank you, we'll keep on looking. Okay, see you next time. You snore, snore. It's not often Layla falls asleep so quickly. Good for her. No, doesn't she doze off all the time? Paimon thinks we should go as Kavi now. He's searching for the book. He must know something. But where is he now? Good question. But we can try hanging around where he might show up. There's a good chance he's there right now, right? Well, shouldn't we look behind the stairs? Maybe he... Ah, oh, there are no books behind the stairs. But I thought maybe he would... He got the book there. Thing. Do you ever think, think we seem like a pair of thieves hiding here to help Shikade? I almost feel like we are here to extort him or something. I was not sure why that is though. We just want to ask him a couple of questions, that's all. That makes sound like we are the baddies. Why have you ever been bothered by your conscience? Ah, that sounds like footsteps. Quick, let's take a look. Uh, stop right there. Uh, uh, I don't know, Hayton. What are you doing here? Isn't that their home? Good question. Surprise indeed. I was under the impression that you knew I lived here. Good morning. Good morning. What can I do for you? I, uh, nothing. Never mind. Can you just ask where Kava is? Oh, goodbye then. He just left. 
this he have work to do or something? What you wonder? That's not our business. We, we're not here to see him. Two steps again. They're heading towards the door. Stop right there, Cave. Ah, what in the what are you doing here? Good question. Surprising indeed. Paimon was under the impression that you know the only reason we'd be here was if we were looking for you. No, we could be looking for Hayton as well, but I don't get it why that was such a big deal. Uh, Paimon, you don't sound like yourself. Looking for a certain book by any chance? Wait, what? Here's the deal. You and Paimon pull Kave to one side. And, come on, there were three long lines in like five seconds to read. How is it that you guys know everything? Uh, and there I was thinking I'd be super discreet the whole time. No one should have noticed. Uh, come on, Gary, you, you really think that no one knows you live here? Hey, that's not fair. Of course nobody knows, except for Sino, Tainari, Kali, and the two of you, right? Friends are friends, so if they know, well, they know. But what if a stranger overheard us? It would be a disaster. I'm, it might even impact my career. Why? What's the big deal of him living here? I didn't remember it was supposed to be a secret that. Anyway, about the book. You believe it contains intel hidden about tr uh, in uh, contains intel about hidden treasure, don't you? Looking to get rich quick, are you? Uh, yeah. Are you offering to help fight? Uh, shucks. Uh, why didn't you say so earlier? So there really is a treasure. How about this? We help you find it, and then we split the loot 50-50. It's a deal. You know, after all we've been through, it's finally our turn to get rich. No need to keep yapping, hidden treasure, the Paimon probes homing on, in on ya. Uh, hey Paimon. What? Uh, is that Daya? Why was that transition? Inus and Paimon in no space there. You must it must be my lucky day running into you like this. They uh, your your mercenaries are pretty tuned into the grapevine. S have you ever heard of a book called Reasoning Knows Not Time of Day, but Suspense Always Follows a Blizzard? Wait, you guys are looking for two? By two you don't mean you're looking for it's two? Darn, it does. So, does that mean we're finally gonna have to whisk her off against Deia? Wait a minute. Would you mind telling me exactly why you're looking for it? You want some more? Go over the rumors that Farzan told you. Hmm. If it really does turn out to be something important, I'll be sure to let him know if I hear anything. Oh, really? From your reaction before, I thought you were after it too. Don't worry, a client had asked me to get her the book, but her attitude seemed off somehow, so I didn't take the commission. She's a smart cookie though, and it was like she was hiding something, so I thought she must have had an uh, ulterior motive. Besides, I have other things to look into right now. Compared to some commission, it's more important that you uncover the truth behind the book. Anyway, no time to lose. I gotta get going. Alright then, good luck, and don't forget those if you hear anything. This quest is weird. I wonder who they a client could be. Hey, yeah, aren't you supposed to go with him? How are you so fast? Flying is faster than running. Sorry, it's a travel thing. I mean, been through so much, I'll run fast. Uh, Alright, listen to me. It's like this. Paimon, don't get your hopes up. The book, it isn't some kind of treasure map. It's just an unbelievably unremarkable, surpassingly ordinary detective novel. Uh, but didn't you just say there was treasure? If most people backtrack like that, Paimon 
just think they changed their mind and wanted to keep all the more for themselves. But that's not something you do. No, that's... I... Uh, I'm sorry, I just couldn't bring myself to tell you earlier, so I played along with what you were saying. What's ha Here's what happens. I borrowed the book a month ago. When I opened it to the first page, I discovered one of the names was printed incorrectly. That night, I'd been drinking just a little, and I was starting to feel drowsy, so I picked up a pen and circled the name. As I'm sure you know, the House of Dana allows borrowers to annotate the books they take out. I'm in the habit of doing that too, so at the time, I didn't give it a second thought. But after I was a dozen or so pages in, I realized that the names of all the characters in the book had intentionally been written slightly wrong. Ah. Uh, maybe it would be more accurate to say that the novel itself was quite strange. All the character names were based on real historical figures, but rather than using their original names, they had been tweaked over ever so slightly. Most people assume that the uh, author had made a mistake or that they, uh, there had been a printing error when they saw spelling mistakes like that. I didn't find the content particularly appealing, so I returned it before I finished reading it. Later on, I heard that the book had suddenly become talk of town, and there were rumors about Mr. Stretch or something. And you thought it had something to do with you? It certainly does sound like it. Yeah, and I also heard that now all the names in the book have been circled, not just one. I just haven't been able to figure out what in Tevar must have happened after returning it. Did you tell anyone else that you borrowed it? Let me think. Uh, Tainari? Last time we met, I also told him all about how poorly parts of the book were written. Uh, he said I make some, I make it sound pretty funny, so much so in fact that he suddenly wanted to take a look at himself. You made it sound like it was so bad it's good. In that case, let's go find Tainari. That's fine with me, but I still have some work to finish up. And it's pretty urgent. How about I head back first and we can meet up again later once I'm done? No problem, hope your work gets your work goes well. Me too, thanks. See you later then. That was way too convoluted just to And honestly, what's the big deal? Let people have a mystery that has a solution. Over there, over there. Hey, Tainari. I heard you, I heard you. How's it going, Zenpaimo? You guys sure look excited. The Tainari about how you're looking for the novel. Ah, that it lets me skip when I want. Uh, as you do so, you reflect once more on how absurdly long the title is and how even just saying it out loud makes you feel tired. And that's why I skipped. Ah, that one. Yes, I did go to the house at the end to borrow it. Kav said it wasn't worth reading, but I was curious, so I went and read it anyway. The problem was, there were already two names uh, circled in the book I borrowed, and the style of each circle was different. It was like some kind of game. Someone had drawn a red circle around the name of the first character that appeared. Then someone else had drawn a green circle around the uh, around another name. So in the time between Kyle returning the book and you taking it back out again, someone else had already annotated it. That's right. But I'm sure there's a first circle. But I'm sure that the first circle was drawn by Kyle. Yes, no surprise there. If you stop and think about it for a second, guessing the identity of the second 
Annotator should be trivial. Isn't there a list of people who borrowed the book? Like any library should have. What do you mean it was... Uh, and there are two people living in a house, and one of them drew the first circle, then it's highly likely that the other person left a mark too. Good point. Sometimes those two really <laughs> are too much. In the end, it was... Uh, it is as I suspected from the beginning. The first character whose name had been circled on the very first page turned out to be the murderer. Surely, that's just a blatant spoiler, like that joke where someone opens a novel and bam, there's no the margin that spoils everything right from the start. What kind of joke would be so cruel? That was one of Cyrus's. I, it wasn't just a joke, he said he actually pulled a stunt like that when he was younger. Hmm. Who was unlucky enough to borrow the book after he scribbled all over it? My master, Nafis, and Professor Zahadi, who had a seminar with him that very afternoon. Cyrus said the master once threatened to give him a good beating by the side of entrance of the house of Dina. It was only thanks to my mother and... Oh, who is your mother? And Professor Zahadi intervened. In that it didn't happen. Fabian doesn't sympathize with Cyrus at all, not one bit. The House of Dana has never stopped people from annotating books, but this seemed like a special case. I didn't think the book could be allowed to uh, keep circulating like that. So I circled several names myself, laying a false trail. Hmm. Best place to hide a leaf is in the forest. It's a simple principle. Uh, well, when you put it like that, but it's still. How many names you circle, Tainari? Let me think. Not too many. About three or four. I chose them all randomly. Then, who circled the other names in the book? There must have been others who borrowed it and did something similar. I'm just not sure why. Who would have thought borrowing books could be so complicated. No, just annotating on borrowed books. See there are another clues, definitely be able to find more by asking. We already figured out the mystery. And we're just kinda of underwhelming. Seems that like there's a story behind the story. The teleport. I gotta check again what. Uh, yeah, gotta check past string what exactly Collie said. Because I thought Tainari was hosting some event here. Look, there's the air. Let's tell her what the real story is. Uh, Candace is there too. So I need to reflect a little on what I did. What happened? Uh, to meet you here today, surely due to the guidance of the gods? Mm, not really. Greetings. Candace, is this a personal trip? Today's trip to the sea is to buy provisions for the people of our village. As well as help Miss Setaria deliver a message to the sages of the Academia while I'm here. On the way, I happened to see Daya sitting in the cafe looking down, so I came over to chat with her. Don't worry, it's nothing serious. It's just that I suddenly remember a few details about the book after talking to you. Before the client had ever contacted me, I heard rumors of an exciting novel full of undiscovered secrets. Out of curiosity, I asked Sino to take it out for me. As desert dweller and a mercenary to boot, the idea of solving a mysterious treasure map is pretty exciting. Hmm, Pavon totally gets that. We inherit our custom of searching for the gold and wisdom in the saints from the gods themselves. But the book turned out to be uh, dry as dust. A bunch of names have been circled, but I still 
And you didn't remember you had the you got the book once? But still, I couldn't figure out what the puzzle was supposed to be, despite reading the whole thing through carefully from start to finish. In the end, I started to think it was some kind of ritual, or a game or something. So I picked up a pen and drew a circle of my own. But later on, Miss Danielzard asked her parents to find a way to borrow it for her. Why, can't you just anybody take the books there? Didn't we just go there to get a book ourselves? We just didn't find it. She said the mysterious markings fascinated her, even though she couldn't get the book itself. Uh, if there were just regular annotations, it wouldn't be anything out of the ordinary. But these strange circles, you can't help but want to try to fi figure out what they might be. That's true, so damn. Yeah. What you're reflecting on is having accidentally interfered with other other people's reading experiences, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Wait, hold on a second. Why did you tell Candace? She's a warrior, you no? Know? Sometimes she has to interrogate criminals and other things like that too. Everyone recognizes that her job is sacred. So when we need to think over what we've gone wrong, we'll talk to her about it. Huh? Why? Uh, that, uh, your explanation doesn't really make sense. Please don't be so surprised, my dear Anus. To me, listening to other people's mistakes is just another way of protecting them. And by speaking of your own mistakes and hearing sincere advice in return, improvement will come. Over time, that's the way we do things. Uh, but... All she did was draw a circle, it's not like she was deliberately trying to mess with anyone. Besides, everyone agrees that the book itself is just bad. Don't worry about it, Thea. Mm, that's true. Just telling Candice how bizarre it is. But, be that as it may, it doesn't change the fact that it just ain't right to mess someone else's enjoyment of book. That's the bottom line. Anyway, Dea, please have faith that the gods will forgive your transgression. Besides, you told me about a part of the story where one of the suspects in the case ended up crawling out of the village on his hands and knees, and he was named Awama. That's right, the detective in the book argued that he must have leapt across the broken bridge like a frog. Of course, you'll find out later that oh, his conjecture was totally off base. Why is that? Because it turns out, our oh, Mao has a superpower, so he could float right across the broken bridge. What the heck's the book kidding about? It sounds completely ludicrous. Our oh, Mao, it's simply too reminiscent of the good name of King Dashrash, don't you think? So, considering how transgressive this book sounds, I don't think it's worth overthinking it. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, I can't help but wonder what our friends at the Temple of Silence would say if they somehow got their hands on this book. Uh, so, you guys are in contact with them now? I'm, I'm sure those sages would be able to unpack interesting ideas from the text we ordinary people could scarce dream of. It's normal for there to be bridges outside blizzard swept mountain villages, and normal for them to be to get broken, but for a person to cross one by floating through the air, or resort to such a lame plot device. Is it really a serious detective novel? Sounds more like something out of comic strip. They have comic strips. But I'm starting to get where Ferrison was coming from. Uh, if you would gotten all excited about reading a detective novel, but end up reading try like that instead, uh, Ferris should not even think about it. So where's the book now? Uh, not sure, I returned it after I was done reading it. And back then, there weren't as many markings inside as the rumors say they, there are. 
Alright then, Taxi Paimon is still on the case. It's just more and more people writing on a already scribbled book. Who could have predicted this? It's precisely because it is unpredictable that you shouldn't blame yourself. Go to the house of Dana again. No, why up here? Where's the angels? Damn, it's good. That teleports in which should the front door. As far as we're still here? No. This reason he knows not time of day, but suspense always follows a blizzard being returned yet. There are two copies of this book, one's being marked up and the other hasn't. I'm guessing you're looking for the one with the marks. Oh, you saw right through us. Many others have asked for it too, I apologize though, it seems it hasn't been returned yet, please come back in later. It will least tell us who borrowed it. Well, as long as it isn't overdue, we'll... Wait patiently for it to be returned. Disclosing borrowers' identities without proper reason for doing so would be a violation of professional ethics. So you have to forgive me for keeping the information confidential. Well, but giving us the date it should be returned shouldn't be a, a confidential information. You've got a point. You'd be terrible if someone looking to steal a book started harassing whoever has borrowed it. Hey, you two look as confused as a couple of Aranara who just run into each other head first. Are you looking for something? I can help. That's not Hida's voice. We're just saying that out loud? Hi there. Uh, can anybody see Nahida or is she showing up just for us? Nahida, have you heard of a book called blah blah blah? Such a long name, but yes, I know the one you mean. I heard that everyone was looking for it, and it sounded fascinating, so I found a brand new copy to write it myself. Now by brand new, you mean, one, you mean it wasn't the copy with all the markings on it? Yes, that's right. It was more interesting the content of the book. I was more interested in the content of the book itself than all those rumors about hidden treasure. So I um so a market copy was all I needed. Speaking of which, it's funny. There's more than one copy of this book, but everyone's looking for the one where all the names have been circled. Are they all free of spoilers or do they actually crave them? Oh, then do you know who has a copy with the markings right now? Just so happens to have seen it in the hands of one of your friends. If you're looking for the copy that's sparked that's part all the rumors, uh, you should look around near the Pass of Alcazar's already. Uh, where's the books? There's pretty much... Okay, that's just a regular. Lights. Come on.
Hmm. They know each other. Is that uh Doris Sino and Setos? Uh, turn you General Mahamatra, entrapment isn't gonna work, you can do that. Hey, what do you mean by entrapment? You were the one who said you had the book, and I said I wanted to read it. Then you agreed to meet me here. Sino showed up to... Uh, Sino showing up to was just coincidence, pure coincidence. You, you don't play games with me. I know who you are. You are the new kid Setos, right? I know you're a friend of Sinus. Uh, so, do you know who I am? Uh, I saw how Sinus was chasing you around, trying to get you to play cards, and <laughs> how you found an excuse to run off after a couple of rounds right after. That left quite an impression. You didn't have to mention that. No, I think there is right about that. You always look for a way out when it comes to playing Invocation. It's becoming quite a problem. In a spy ball, you've been staying in there for quite a while. Oh, if it isn't, if it isn't my dear in the Paimon, what brings the two of you to the Palace of Alcazar, sorry? Might it be that you have come to do business with me, the Lord Sangame Bay? Uh, of course, of course. Please give me a moment to conclude our business here. Then I'll be with you straight away. Anyway, General Mahamatra, as I'm sure you are well aware, the means by which I had someone borrow this book to, from the House of Dino were both completely legal and perfectly perfectly reasonable. Seeing as it, it isn't yet time to return it, you have no right to forcibly seize the book I borrowed. That would only be the case had you not engaged in any irregular activities. Yet just now, a buyer, Setus, came to the palace of Alcazar on the base of a mysterious message to meet a seller, hoping vain to purchase a detective novel. What do you mean, buyer? He's one of your people. You've sent him here to deliberately try to buy and entrap me. That is not something I can acknowledge. What I can tell you is that I've had my eyes on this book for some time. Remember, it is forbidden to transfer or sell books from the House of Dana without explicit approval from the relevant authorities. Mm, I'm not selling anything, just to be clear, I'm just making the most of an opportunity. If someone pays me a little something on the side, I lend them this mysterious light little novel to browse for a bit. If you don't believe me, just ask any of my custom, uh, I mean curious readers. Uh, yes, that's right, your readers. Anyway, I was just showing him the book. Is that so? And here I was thinking you were really going to go through with an illegal transaction like this, Sensos. Uh, wait, what? You two aren't, really aren't together? I was just really curious about the book. I finally managed to track it down, but Sino... Uh, it's true that Dora never actually said she wanted to sell the book. Uh, so she isn't the mastermind who started all this. Mastermind? Uh, so, by her own account, it looks like you might have jumped the gun a bit, General Mahamatra. I'm not handing the book over. Uh, you may think you've played it on a story. But well, when you opened the book just now, I saw the truth revealed before me. The book's return date is today. Mm. That sign of sure got a sharp eye. That's right, I do have good vision. You have less than half an hour before the book's overdue. Give it to me and I will return it. Okay, I get it that he's... Um, uh, he always do things by the law and stuff, but it doesn't seem right to just hand over the book to somebody else, return it. Uh, how could I just hand over to you like that? This is a mysterious, super awesome, mega amazing paragon of logical detective novels that is practically a treasure. I'm going to make fortune off of it. Yeah, can she buy some regular ones? 
and copy the markings. To really be admitting that aloud. Didn't say I was going to sell it. It's not like I was being serious. Then how about this? There is sign of why don't to two play a little game with the book as the stakes. That's one way of solving it. How about it, Dory? Do you dare accept the challenge? If you win, I'll turn a blind eye to the book for the time being. And if you lose, you have to hand it over. Why are they doing this? She has returned soon. Oh, sounds interesting. Very well, I mean. What's the contest? For both of you, confident in our powers of mental recall. My memory is not bad. Yes. And you have both read the contents of this book, correct? That's right. Uh, Sino, you actually read it? Oh, uh -huh. well, needless to say, so have I. In that case, I'll just open the book and flip through a few pages. And you tell me how many names have been circled. Best out of three wins. Sounds good. Okay, but then you need to add that memory. Uh, that's nuts. What? Cheating out? No, it's a game. Let's, it's game on. Let's go. Good. In that case, first page. Six. Six. Both correct. Next, the second page. I think it was four. Let's say four. Both of you are right again. Two draws. So it all ends up the next question. Listen up. Oh, page 61. Uh, what? The, I don't quite remember. Uh, seven. I know. The answer is five. Absolutely correct. The answer is five. Uh, so is your memory really that good? I'm not buying it. How did you do that? Uh, it's not actually because I have good memory, but because the circling of the names left a deep impression of me. On me. After I borrowed it, I noticed the names on the first pages had been selectively circled by different people. Each person's paintmanship was different, and moreover, I recognized three of the circles that had been drawn by Tainari. He can recognize Tainari's circles. <laughs> A few others have the same color of ink as he does. Ah. So it was uh, instantly recognizable. You even know that? Yes, I learned a bit. I learned of the habit of his long ago. At that time, I had just been promoted to General Mahamatra. They would go on a secret base when I wanted to get through all the trivial tasks in my entry at once with minimal disturbances. I would often find Tainari hidden away on a tree there, doing his homework. Noticing the writing implements he favored wasn't exactly detective work. In all these years, he's never once changed the ink he uses. Next to that book, anyone who's read it knows that the first name Circle is the real murderer. Perhaps Tainari did not want the plot to be spoiled for anyone else, so he circled other names. Ah, so he solved it all by himself. Annotating your markings on a book is not itself a violation of book borrowing regulations, but why are all the other marks there? Is there some conspiracy behind them? What do they have to do with Tainari? Once you get to the bottom of this, even if it's just for the sake of my friend, and to uncover the secret, you must become a part of the conspiracy. So I circle all the other names that were left in the book. What? To think of do such a thing, so there's no treasure at all? It was just you guys all along? That's right. Should you wish to hide a grain of sand, bury it in the desert. And in that grain of sand, I can catch a glimpse of the truth. And so you were drawn to it, making your plans, yet in a twist of fate, were discovered by me. No matter how vast this word is, you cannot run from the long arm of the law. 
Yeah, but she didn't do anything wrong. Wow, you are making a meal out of this, aren't you? You really, really have, a way, have way too much time on your hands. Okay, I give up. You win. Uh, that's enough for today. It's, it is time for Lord Sangama Bay to return to her room for some repose. Farewell, all. So, do you intend to take this book back to the Temple of Silence? Huh? I heard there was a treasure hidden inside and thought it might have something to do with the temple. I never thought it was a real st there was a real story behind it. Well, when you agreed to compete, I had already surmised you the I had already surmised you were familiar with this book. That's why I chose that particular format. Really smooth, bro. Hmm what's with that look? We're just thinking there have been more twists and turns in the story behind the book than in the actual story itself. Well, as long as you got it back, I'll leave uncovering the rest of the secrets to you and take my leave now, for now. See you later, everyone. Can I borrow the book? Of course. Doesn't have to be returned in less than half an hour. After Sino hands you the book, you and will quickly thumb through it. Though you weren't reading very carefully, you can tell that something is not quite right. The plot's wildly imaginative, and just as everyone says, though most of the names in the book seem familiar, when on closer inspection, you realize that they aren't actually names of historical figures you thought they were at first. Not only that, but every name has been circled, thinking Back on the course of events, you fall silent, and then you explain the full story. How unexpected. But still, it does make sense. And it is far better than the existence of an actual conspiracy. In that case, I still have other plans. Last time I was in Caravan Rebat, I promised a midday in Candace for drinks. And could I trouble to return the book for me? Sure, leave that to me. Thanks, friend. I don't really get what was the point of that. It was really a funny story or anything. Your our start was much better. Didn't need this, I guess. Well, we're finally back. Now let's return this book. You really found the book? Amazing. I've been waiting here for it to be returned so I could see it as soon as possible. Recount the entire tale to Kave's eager ears. Well, seriously, how is that even possible? I, I circled the actual murderer. Oh yeah, he didn't finish the book. But I was pretty surprised by this whole thing too. Let's just take care of uh, the book problem first. Hello, this book it, uh, is probably all my fault for using permanent ink to mark the, a page, since that caused a whole mess of other things to happen. Now it's all marked up like this, and there's even risk of those marks spoiling the story, so I like to buy it. No, just leave it there, what? Leave people wondering. The whole issue should be avoidable if the academy uses the money to buy a new copy. Will you please consider my proposal? Mr. Kave, your Nia has married, and it is indeed a good way to resolve this situation. I'll confirm the book's price now, and then you can pay over there. That's great, thank you so much. Shortly afterwards, Kave accompanies the academia staff to register the purchase of the book, and pays the full amount. The staff member carefully wraps up the Probably marked up old book and gives it to him. 
What a blunder. Regardless, thank you so much for your help. Well, but there is this story around the book already. He could sell that for more. It was nothing. We were just kind of along for the ride. Still coming, it'd be better if you used something more erasable to make notes in the future. I understand. I'll never let myself subconsciously correct typesetting errors ever again. No, I mean, I'll never again borrow a book with such long name, at least for a while. Hmm, what's loading? Does it just have to unload cover? Uh, oh, hey then. You're here. I was looking everywhere for you. What is it? Uh, guess what I got in this little bag here. If I had to guess, I am in tears of regret. Uh, and what would you know? Uh, it's reason he knows not time of day, but suspense always follows a blizzard. Shouldn't they have read the name of the author or something? You actually bother to memorize a ridiculous and boring name like that? It's just because when I was filling out paperwork to buy it back at the academy's office, I had to write it out over and over. It looks like this book has a new owner. Only because it subconsciously marks up the book with ink. Did you know that Tainari, Deya and Sino all circled names in the book? And it always started because the name I circled was a real killer. Uh, to be perfectly honest, the moment I first saw the murderer's name circled, I knew this would happen. Wait a second, how come you've read the book too? I had the pleasure of reading it in the house of Dana, the logic is a mess, it's just poorly written. So he read that in the house of Dina, so Tainari the does deduce it was him that wrote that circled the second name, but that was just a coincidence. And you left the book out into the study. Uh, so you knew I circled the killer. Then, then did you circle any names in the book? What do you think? So you did? The second one is mine. Why? Best way to avoid spoilers to add a red herring. Then why just one? They never circled three. Uh, I already significantly reduced the probability of the murder identity being spoiled for the next reader. That's more than enough. No need to worry about things that are beyond saving. And just why is it necessary? Using permanent ink circle name on the first page. That's obviously beyond saving. What kind of logic is that? I better just draw your circle for fun. If I must say so, it's because the circling of the names is far more interesting than the book itself. To a fair point. In the end, I only have myself to blame for using up all my pencils. I need to go buy some more. Congratulations, this is one of a kind out of print book personally painted by the hands of so many, is now yours. Do you think I look happy about it? I don't even want it. <laughs> if it was Paimo, she wouldn't want it either. Uh, that's a no from me too. We are always carrying a bunch of things with us. We could take this book. I actually wanted to lend him some money sometime. <laughs> ah, I thought they would be having coffee here. Oh, actually, there are no more chairs there. Let's see if they are inside. But the quest is over, I think they just vanished. So let's step more back there. Uh, 
Let's check. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, that was just weird. Uh, was like moments. Okay, let's complete. Ah, oh, no, no, no. Before completing those, there are actual quests, aren't there? Uh, those quests. Uh, Petrobot Trials. Fly Hatter's Tricks. Yeah, okay, so those are actual quests. Terrifying footprints. Who has the quest here? Ah, up here. Your Highness, what brings you here? Huh. Uh, given how things stain, I shall retrieve the relic myself and then decide what to do next. Your Highness, that will not do. Your Highness, you cannot go. Oh, it seems that you have a better solution. Let's hear it then, Minister Saborn. Uh, I uh, would like to inform Your Highness that following a long discussion with Sofash Salfa last night, we have come to the conclusion that it would be better to set up a trial ground elsewhere. Here, here. And then the guardian who passes our selection process can retrieve the relic for us. Two birds, one stone. Without the relic... Ah, oh, nobody said uh, the princess's name. Simes, Prince of the Kingdom of Breezes and Bells. Uh. But without the relic, how can we be sure that the chosen guardian is really the one we are looking for? I, um, we're not ministers, though so we are indeed facing a great crisis. This is precisely as the legend predicted. When the crisis befall us, a guardian shall thereupon emerge. At this moment, what I must do is ensure that they are shown the right path. Besides, I am the best flyer in the kingdom, so there is none more suitable than I to judge the guardian's abilities. But then, will you go instead? I I'm afraid my legs are rather useless when it comes to flight of any kind. How about you, Saborn? Will you go? Uh, my eyesight, alas, I fear I would be unable to see their movements clearly enough to judge. Good, that's settled then. The two of you will stay to handle affairs within the kingdom while I shall assist in managing the selection process at the original location myself. Something fun going on? But I submit myself as a candidate for the trial, your highness. Oh, very good at flying and adventuring too. Can we participate? Oh, greetings to both of you and welcome to the Kingdom of Breezes and Bells. You are very welcome to sign up for the Guardians of, Guardian of the Kingdom selection trials. You have not previously participated in the selection trials of our kingdom of breezes and bells, if I'm not mistaken. How does your hiding snows know this? Because we're different from paper animals. Your appearance differs greatly from our kingdom's subjects. Had you taken a part before, I would not forget it. Uh, that's enough chit chat, I suppose, as it is. As it so happens, I was just about to head over to host a selection ceremony near the Relic Shrine. Let us go there together. Ministers, the Kingdom's affairs are in your hands. Do try not to let anyone cut this tree down while I'm away fighting the, our true guardian, if you could. As you wish, Your Highness. The two of you, please come with me. Before the selection officially begins, there are a few things I still need to tell you. Uh, 
Uh huh. Summer, we must do something. Uh, you're no doubt right. But when have you ever managed to hold back the princess? Where am I supposed to go to? Uh, of course, the princess. Please wait here a moment, I'll introduce the tribe for you, as well as a few things that you need to watch over out for. Wow, her highness sure had, is a decisive decision maker, huh? Guess that's a true princess for you. I declare I accept the tribe quite suddenly, but your highness didn't seem particularly surprised. Uh, oh, perhaps my introduction seemed a little too forthcoming, my apologies. In truth, there have been many squirrels who, like you, have suddenly turned up and declared their intention to undergo the trial. So I am already accustomed to receiving such candidates. At least, there were many before the dragon attacks the kingdom. You said it was to retrieve a relic. Is it being kept somewhere dangerous? It is indeed. As I mentioned not long ago, a giant dragon passed through our kingdom. We tried our best to drive it away, but before leaving, uh, it trampled both the trial ground and the sacred site where the relic was kept to the smitterings. Our original stable trial environment is now very different from the way it used to be. The wind currents have become unpredictable. Uh, unpredictable causing dramatic increase in the difficulty of some trial stages. After the environment changed so drastically, some candidates who could have easily passed the first few stages before now find even the very first stage too challenging. But from another perspective, the current trial is actually a better test of a candidate's true strength, and so it should better help us choose a strong guardian of the kingdom. I'm pretty strong. Fine, Mochu. Uh, well, that's. That is truly the case, let us get straight to it. Allow me to introduce the trial to you. Simply put, in this trial the candidate must help their screw companion fly in the right direction by guiding them along the wind currents. Uh, but then the squirrels had a squirrel companion. Don't worry, it isn't complicated. All I have to do is observe the direction of the currents and make the decisions accordingly. Of course, you need not worry about the issue of direction. In this kingdom, no wind can stop me from flying wherever I will. So it's kind of more your merits than mine. Alright, let us begin. Please make sure you're both ready. I can work well together, the judgment is more precise. Can we keep her? Only Prisimus, who possesses main powers of flight, may ever go against the current through the wind passage. Ordinary flying squirrels would be scared off by the flurry of power of fruit. By the flower of flower of fury unleashed. And lies the final trial, prepare ourselves. So 
So, did I pass? Your highness, you're amazing. You flew past so easily. Your ability to judge the wind's currents was so rem was also remarkable. It seems you are worthy to undergo the trial after all. Mm. Let us make haste to decide where the relic is being kept. Hopefully we won't have another run-in with that dragon. Uh, I am a voice, but not life. Hmm? What was that? It sounded like someone's voice. You know, did you hear that? Definitely heard, but I have no idea what it meant. Oh, the princess is way ahead. Let's forget about that for now and catch up with her first. Okay, I think it's a side tracking. Oh, she went really far. Uh, okay. Ah, the the ball on the ground. Mm -hmm. Ah, Kali is not there anymore. Uh, if Kali is not there anymore, is are people still around? So this where the relic has been kept. These footprints are massive. The dragon must be huge. Yeah, it's not like we didn't see it yet. Perhaps in driving the dragon away, we also drove it into a rage. The dragon is actually... Ah, so that's... It will tell the story of the dragon to princess. It was in entirety, it's probably no details today. Can such a thing be? Truly unexpected. At the time, I was too panicked, so I just gave the order to drive him away. How do we... The chance to calmly speak with one another, perhaps. Interesting. This, I'm pretty sure this is optional then, because this quest was here from the beginning of the event. Never mind. What's done is done. We must focus on the problem at hand. As for the dragon, once our problems have been resolved, I shall visit him personally. Now let us focus on the relic. The relic is down there. Uh, Pass the trial, you may claim it. So, Paim Paimon thought that the relic would be protected by some kind of seal or guard or something. But it looks like it's just lying there, and it doesn't seem like anything is stopping someone from just taking it. Just a hop and a step away. We. We. We don't we just. Why don't we just jump down and take it? Uh, what you say is correct, the relic does indeed have a seal, namely the trial that you have seen. According to the kingdom's records, one must pass a trial in order to retrieve the relic. Conservatively, conversely, if it is taken by someone who has not yet passed the trial, it will lose its meaning as a relic. Thus, even I must pass the entire trial to retrieve the true relic. There must be both a trial and a challenger to do so. Without satisfying these two conditions, the best case scenario is that we would be walking away with a useless lump of stone. Best case scenario doesn't mean something worse could happen to Those who act in defiance of the rules shall be cursed. The curse, if that's the, in that case, let's just go ahead and accept the trial. Uh, okay, I was thinking how to mess with things. Uh, perhaps those huge flowers over there could be of some use. Yeah, but right now I'm supposed to throw you here, right? Okay, I have to turn that thing on first. I didn't expect you to be able to judge the wind current so accurately. 
accurately. If you are flying squirrels like I am, navigating those wind currents will pose no challenge. Uh, of that I am certain, but most natural when it comes to flying. If everyone had to use wind gliders, I'd be unbeatable. If that's so, uh, I'm glad to hear that because you two are the most guardian like candidates I've ever seen. Then let us continue. The current wind conditions are just right, no problem. <laughs> Everything is going great. Maybe we're the gardens that Her Highness has been looking for. Your Highness was outstanding too. Your Highness is the only true guardian. Outstanding. Thank you for your kind words. I had in fact passed the trial many times before the dragon destroyed the sacred site. Purely in terms of flying ability, I'm confident that no other squirrel is my equal. Previous candidates found even the first few stages too difficult. Mm. But if your highness is already passed the trial, how come you didn't take the relic? Unfortunately, the relic has yet to acknowledge me. So even guardians require the relic's acknowledgement. What does the relic get to call the shots? That I do not know. Perhaps you thought I didn't pass the trial. Surely there aren't hidden stages. Do the trial stages change for each challenger? All I know is the relic has never lit up for me. But you, not only have you come precisely at our kingdom's um, hour of need, but your capabilities are undeniable. That is why I believe you were in the relic's acknowledgement. Let us continue. The final stage of the trial awaits. No. Late bear. I have to get that. Appears you have some uninvited guests. What a trouble to you kindly remove them from the premise. I shall do the grenades. Gather! Why are you there? Surely, you're both exceptionally skilled. Something's wrong with the purest flower. Well, well, then I shall complete this part of my all. Wait, what? Where are you? You see vision, which is sure more on what you guess. Ah. Uh. Go. You must accept the relic's judgment. We pass. You know, so we're the guardians now. Uh, so, is this the relic that you used to acknowledge new guardians? Uh, there's some card into it. Uh, like a line of text, maybe. Let Pai will take a closer look. Stories follow rules, unfolding in cyclical patterns. But each should follow its own course. Uh, Pema doesn't get it. Do you get it? It's probably some roundabout way of cheering us on. It's probably meant to encourage challengers. Those words have always been there. Even I do not know their origin. I sense that they may hold some great significance for the kingdom. But I have yet to grasp their meaning. Whatever the case, given your performance on the trial, you are undoubtedly the most suitable candidate for the title of Guardian that I've ever met. Your abilities and judgment are beyond question. Meeting you at a time like this is truly a blessing for our kingdom. Now that we have retrieved the relic, 
we may hold a ceremony right away. I'm fully confident that your courage and abilities will have won you the relic's respect. You flatter me, your highness. Nothing can stand in our way. Then yes, nothing. We're just glad we could help you, your highness. Shouldn't you glow? Well, when did you guys get here? Paimon didn't even notice you arrive. We flew over, of course. We were among the best flyers around when we were young, you know? How else would we have been able to serve the princess? Their judges grow by its appearance. They all look the same. Well, I never... A visitor turning up at a time, our time of crisis, a guardian emerging from the trials victorious, and the relic in our possession, intact and unharmed. Yeah, I thought it would glow yellow, maybe. Your Highness, everything is exactly as the legends say. It seems that our kingdom has fi finally has a future to look forward to. We shall find out soon enough. Now please place your hand upon the relic. Let it light up and proclaim that you are henceforth the guardian of the kingdom. Uh, do you think it's not bright enough? Uh, has it even lit up at all? If I want to take a look. Uh, maybe it's been there so long that it just can't light up anymore? Kind of like how candles that have been lying around too long won't burn very brightly. Is that so? Uh, how, how could that be? All the details match, yet the relic still... Your Highness, whatever the case, at least the relic is in our hands, even if our guest has failed to be acknowledged by it. No. Your Highness? Place a relic to one side. It is my kingdom for we... Place the relic to one side. It is my kingdom for which the challenges have come. Therefore, it is I who must acknowledge them. Your Highness, but no ruler of our kingdom has ever taken it upon themselves to acknowledge a guardian. Then let us create a precedent for future rulers to follow. Enos, Paimon, come forward. As princes of the kingdom of breezes and bells, I hereby declare that Enos and Paimon shall henceforth be recognized as the kingdom's paladins of breezes and bells. Man, we should have somewhere we can find the whole list of titles we have. And choose one to go along with our uh, profile. At our service, your highness. It is my honor, your highness. Hure, a paladin of princes and bells. Uh, such a cool title. Definitely cooler than just being any old guardian. It sounds better than honor a knight. But surely that means we still haven't found our guardian. And if that is so, then we won't be able to fulfill our calling. And if we cannot fulfill our calling, we will no longer have a future to look forward to. Just like the kingdoms that come bef came before us. Fret not, I will find a way. You have my sword. Shouts though require my age, I am at the service. My thanks, good paladin. I will indeed need your help. But first, I will need to put the pieces of this puzzle together. After some time has passed, please return to my kingdom to meet me. When the time is nigh, we shall set forth in search of the kingdom's future together. Ugh. Something with which to commemorate this occasion. Uh, but then the bench from here is it like a real life day or something like that? Uh, no, paper frogs in the rain, some pond, adapt jumpers, press the enter button to put magic thread in the back, and use moment to move fire. Uh, frog's jump direction in distance. Ah, okay. Press the button by pulling on the mesh thread to make the paper frog jump forth. By pulling distance exceed the mesh thread maximum limit, the paper frog automatically jump forth. Alright, doesn't matter. That's what I want. Uh, 
there's no more teleports here. Oh, that one's different. Well done, my fine hind legs, ladies and gentlemen. Well done indeed. This jumping contest is on fire. Uh, just a moment ago, we saw Stumpy the Fearless show his awesome might. His impressive epic strength. He, he's made a stable yet decent leap. One worth of a favorite to take gold. But next up, we have. The one we've all been waiting for, the unequaled, the unrivaled, the unparalleled. Oh, that's fancy. Fall Robert, uh, who will emerge as champion and win the great, who will emerge a champion as champion and win the great honor and burden of fetching the princess. Ah, oh, the frogs have to look for princess. Uh, they want to fetch a princess? Wait a minute. So the one uh, Princess Simis was looking for was... Yeah, but I could have come here before. Uh, that's gonna be a coincidence, right? But that's the case, they should... Then this should save her a whole lot of effort. Uh, I guess we've done our duty as the Paladins of Princess and Bells too, huh? In case, let's check the situation out first. That's right. Let's stay focused and keep our eyes peeled. Before the final round begins, let us take a short break and give our two contestants time to rest. For the time being, the competition venue will be open to you all, so go forth and jump to your heart's content. That is what the Rain Song Pond is here for, after all. Talk the calm paper frog. Wait, come to the calm paper frog, and it's going to chew. Hmm. Four birds, I know how nervous you are right now. This is the final match that every frog has been looking forward to. You. I'm sorry, Mr. Horilo, but I... Please don't blame him, sir. Give him a moment to rest. After all, Farbert, I'm sure you need some time to think about how you shall pleasantly surprise us all. Stumpy, you're good enough, I think. Oh, say it, friend. You will no doubt set a new record in just a moment. Trust me. For now, just rest. You need time. Alright, you're right, my friend. I need some time. I like him. Looks cool. Much anticipated champion front runner. Hopper of under nine heights. First referee. Uh, <laughs> excited paper frog. Greetings, all our guests. You don't seem like frogs. Nonetheless, welcome to Rain Song Pond. May your legs be limber. Tell me about the competition. As you have seen and heard, this contest should decide the frog who's best at jumping. Our content contestants go through the qualifiers, group matches, elimination matches, and only those who make it through all these can reach the finals. That uh, sounds kind of complicated. Yeah, a bit, but it sounds like any organized. Uh, sports. It's not complicated at all. Simply steps into the simply step into the arena and clear the challenges that lie before you. Your guess if it suits your fancy, you can also try the bouncing contest here. This is meant to test the contestant's speed and stability when jumping. I was just about to do some practice here. 
then take part in the next contest. But my skills aren't exactly up to par. I can't jump well enough on my own. Would you two be willing to assist me? So there's no competition ongoing here. I'm not the best jumper ever. Uh, competition, of course. The competition's already reached its the finals, so the other venues are now open for practice. Keep practicing, keep jumping, keep competing. That's the way you get better and better. Come on, dear guests. You enjoy the bouncing contest too, I guarantee it. That's part of the quest, or I guess it is. Practice. Uh. We're almost there. Too much, ah, but it works. Uh, this game is pretty fun, don't you think? Paimon wants to give it a try too. Then be my guess. Uh, Paimon can pose as if she's jumping in the air too. You know, it's pretty much the same anyway. I knew you enjoyed the bouncing contest, but just now, that was just a game. This is a long way off from a real contest. Only the very best of the best of us can take part in the latter. Uh, and this contest will decide who is the best suited to rescue the princess. Ah, it's just so exciting. Oh, sorry dear guests, my apologies. I just can't help but rainbow all about Farbert. After all, the whole reason we organized so many contests was to choose the paper frog with the steadiest, furthest, most awe-inspiring jump, so that they could go rescue the princess. There's still some time before the final match begins, so feel free to take a look around. Horello will use his booming voice to remind us when the competition is about to begin, so listen out for it, and make sure you find good seats. Have I should be in the finals? I believe in him. Okay, the other one. Welcome, dear guests. I presume you are also here to watch the competition. Welcome, in any case, to Rain Song Pond. You have come at the right time, but also uh, perhaps you the wrong one. The competition is coming to a close, with only the final, the result of which is already beyond doubt, left to take place. I'm sure you have heard of Farbert and Stumpy, but they are both leading ex exponents in the art of jumping, but in my experience, Farbert is sure to win. Farbert is far better at this than all the other paper frogs, and has won countless championships as a result. He is, therefore, the undisputed favorite. He has the strongest legs, the most agile mind, the most resolute spirit, the most importantly, he constantly seeks to share his no his know-how with other frogs. Stampa is, like me, one of the paper frogs who learns by watching him. We respect, trust and believe that he will once again achieve great success. Before the final begins, I'd like to stay in practice a little longer to prepare for the next run of competitions. If you do not mind, we could practice together. Perhaps you might even come up with some good ideas to help me jump all the better. So after choosing the paper frog who will save the princess, you will still organize these contests. Of course, it's not just about rescuing the princess. Most important, it is the con most important is the contest itself. And by and what it teaches us, self-belief, resolve, bravery. 
Only a paper frog who understands and embodies such virtues will emerge as our champion. Come then, dear guests, <laughs> let us see if you can feel the virtue inherent in our contest. But earlier you uh, observe the paper frogs next to things. Oh dear, what a terrible collision. <laughs> what about shit up? I've come to aid you. Let's go again. We'll get it this time. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Lower this. Staring into Water's my box. eyes is ill advised. I can't promise you'll like what you see. Ah, he was the one learning that. Okay. Not bad, you're quite good at this. If you have time, I'll be willing to recommend you to the organizing committee. Next time we hold up this competition, we will all. We'll be able to measure ourselves against one another. Still, I shan't take up more of your time until then. The final is about to begin. <laughs> I guess we'll have to see just how good this Farberg this guy is. He'll blow yourself up for sure. Still, he did, he did seem a bit nervous when I saw him recently. He was constantly practicing the most basic moves and then getting annoyed at how he was performing them. But these are the finals, it's normal to get nervous, right? Yeah, these are the finals, but nerves are to be expected. That's what I thought, but... No, I still believe in him, he's not the type to give in so easily. I've got to keep practicing myself, if you like, dear guests, please feel free to have a look around. The finals are about to begin, so, so be sure you don't miss them. And here it is, here it comes, my fine highlight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The unparalleled Farbert steps forward to make his sleep. He, he jumped over three lotus leaves and fell into the water. It seems we have a champion. The one who will welcome our princess is Stampy. Congratulations to our... No, Mr. Horlow, I protest. This is ridiculous, absurd even. I shall not accept the title of champion in this manner. Goodness gracious, by the morning, you. Come now, you surpass Forbert in front of all frog kind. Forbert slipped up, that's all. He's just not in good form, no? That will not convince me, nor any other paper frogs. Anyway, let's give Forbert a moment to himself. Uh, we'll continue this later. It seems we have guests. Welcome, welcome to Rainsome Pond. What can I help you with? What is this competition about? We saw a frog make a really awesome leap. <laughs> uh, then you must have caught sight of Farbert. He's one of the participants in this contest and the finest jumper in all pond, or so he was, or so he once was. A contest? Oh, Paimon gets it. This must be the start of competition to see who can jump the best. Shouldn't they have figured out by now? I had to talk to the other frogs. Very sharp review, young lady. That is exactly the sort of competition we are running. Only the most legendary leaper and skill skipper may take the crown, thus earning the great, time, great burden of rescuing the princess. Uh, sounds pretty cool. Shame we seem to have missed it all, though. Otherwise, I'd have to. I have taken part, we're not frogs. What a shame, you have done so, so well too, Paimon. Uh, why Paimon? Flying doesn't normally involve much bouncing, you know? Flying's faster than jumping, it'd be an easy win for you. But wouldn't that be cheating? You are supposed to use your legs to jump. If one of us had to take part, it had to be you. Still, Paimon's never seen you jump that far before, except when we were running away from monsters. You're never running away from monsters. In that case, 
you do want to ask your champion over here for some advice. My apologies, dear guests. And Mr. Horror too, but as I said before, uh, and I'll say it again, I'm no champion. But as surely as the Lotus stem stained, according to the rules, you are the champion. I'll be the judge of that. Thank you very much. This contest is made to pick the best of us, the most skilled of jumpers, to go save our princess. This is a matter of honor of all frog kind. The Farbert is the very best of us. You know this, all of us do. So Farbert was really the impressive. Oh, we heard a lot of other paper frogs talking about him. Is everything they say about him true? That's right. Farbert is, was, the best frog in our pond. He could easily bound all the way across 12 lotus leaves and land on the 13th. And he lands so lightly that the dew upon the leaf would not be disturbed. He could even jump between lotus leaves amidst a flowing river and not fall into the water, no matter how fierce the current. But we just saw him. Uh, so I'm guessing he is not in good form right now. Yeah, he seems kind of down. He looks super sad when he was leaving just now too. He's just having a temporary rough patch. Uh, that's the only reason he made that mistake. Please, Mr. Horelu, for the sake of the contest, and the sake of our calling, I'd like to ask for a rematch. If you deem necessary, you can consult the opinion of all other frog. So I am sure they'll concur. Listen, Stampe, I know you're a capital fellow, sharp-minded, and upstanding to both to boot. But did you not see how Forbert was faring? He left without even attempting to make another leap. I speak with him. We've trained together all this time, so I know how he feels. He'll understand. Ah, for the love of Lotus Leaves and Lucent Deal, alright, I'll go with you to meet Forbert. You we'll come along too. We're uh, really good at encouraging people. And we are great jumpers too. Uh, have been secretly training behind Primal's back or something. I'm just a, I'm just good at making others jump a long way at least. Mm, but humorous and polite. Thank you for your goodwill. In that case, let us go together. Of any luck, that good humor of yours might soothe his sore spirit. Bond protect us, uh, and I wonder which shall serve us better: the soft or hard approach. Uh, do you guys mention Farbert? Farbert, I can only hope that you're in better shape now. Uh, where was the other one? I can't find here. Oh, how? How could this be? How could Farbert flub so badly? A book up here. Uh, he's here. Are you there? Uh, there you are. The award ceremony is over then. Just the opposite, in fact. Both Mr. Horlow and I are of the opinion that things are far from over. Indeed. I hereby announce, in my capacity as referee, that you, Mr. Forbert, has one more chance to jump. To maintain the fairness of this competition and to fulfill our duty to the calling, you must do a really jump. Dear Mr. Horilu, I, as a contestant, signed the competition rules pertaining to competitive behavior 
that may bring harm to oneself and one's tribe. I forfeit my second jump attempt. I do not want to disappoint everyone again, nor do, nor bring ruin to our calling. This is the only truly responsible course of action. Wow, what a professional answer. He even had the specific clauses handy. He didn't mention the number of the clauses. Uh, even gave it a touch of emotional appeal. Alright, looks like playing yeah, looks like playing hardball isn't going to work. Oh loosen deal in Lotus Leaves. But I haven't left the venue. I don't understand what you mean to say, dear guest. This is the best place from which to watch the competition unfold. If you really wanted to give up, you wouldn't have stayed here. But that's true. You can see everything is going on in the long distance jumping contest from here. If he really had given up and no longer wanted to have anything to do with the contest, why would he stay here? I don't wish to talk about this anymore. I believe I've, I've been clear. Sorry, Stumpe and our two guests as well. Didn't even wait for Val to finish speaking. Oh, Farbars. For both sake, I... I'm so tardy. Hang on a second. Listen to us, would you? Is there anything else I can help you with, your guests? I also saw the terrible state I was in. I admit, I mostly knew what you were going to say the moment I saw you arriving, Stumpy. My answer is no, and so you will always be. Look at my ankles. They're not ankles that can carry such heavy burden. Not ones that can save the princess. They look pretty sturdy ankles to me. A finer pair of ankles I have <laughs> never seen. Yeah, Paimon has a neither. But I made a mistake. No, I've been making mistakes all along. I'm sorry, you two, but I cannot continue competing. Why not? Just give us some explanation. Hey, don't go, we just want to tell you one thing, one last thing. All frogs make mistakes. They just had to learn from them, that's all. You guessed, you do not understand. I, I initially believed that mistakes were mere drops of dew that fall upon our heads. Nothing that could truly knock a froggy down. But I was wrong. Perhaps they were never mere drops, but rather marking two rocks at the bottom of a pond. Withered wood stuck into the waterbed, or a vent hidden within the muck. muck. We can overlook them, bury them, step over them, or pretend they don't exist. Uh, but they will not rest, my friend. They will wait the opportunity for a chance to come back to bite you. Please go and let me go too. I'm nothing but a mere lotus head who has had all its secrets removed. Even a light breeze would surge through the many holes in my heart and chill me to the bone. I cannot take this great burden. Uh, this is the voice of my heart. I have let all frogs down, including myself. You still have every try, you know? Yeah, you've got another chance to prove yourself. I do not wish to taste the bitter pang of failure once more. My legs and my heart cannot. Oh, this lot sleeps moving all of a sudden. What's going on? But, but it should have been fixed in place. No, it's moving forward. Please stay firm, dear guest. I will steer it as best as I can. Oh, the leaves are rocking all over the place. We're gonna capsize. Huh. Watch out for what pillars, what sleeves won't stand the impact. Okay, let's see the impact. Only zone shark curse, the frogs sleep. I don't really have to stop. Ah, it's taken. Ah. 
anything here before? We used to know. Also from the Charney. Ah. Okay, what happens when you lose? Like that, can control. Oh. Stop picking out. Oh, we're going all around. I can do this, I can do this. Okay, let's not do this. Oh. Switch me everyone, hold on tight. Ah, now he's doing it by himself. I, I just got one at the beginning. We couldn't fail. We'll look at, uh, we'll look at that. Forbert the unwilling, Forbert the bold. He sees the opportunity for a retry and gasps for a spectacular leap. Spectacular indeed. This is a miracle without precedent. He's the only paper frog ever to leap across the, this precipice. I knew you had it in you, Forbert. I believed in you. The lotus leaf that suddenly started moving was... That was your doing, wasn't it? Uh, it was something that Mr. Hobart and I came up with together. I apologize, dear guests, for hiding this from you. Now well, it was certainly exciting. I'd do it all over again. A bit of advance notice would be appreciated, though. Do it over again. Alright then, Hobart. Now that everyone has witnessed your great leap, you no longer have any reason to reject the victor's crown. But it was a coincidence, a miracle born of circumstances, just one, one fluke leap. It was only with the aid of these two guests that I was able to do it at all. I'll be honest, we were just having fun drifting alongside you. Exactly, we were just watching from the sidelines. The big jump was all you, still, our work wasn't in vain. Right? <laughs> It wouldn't be a waste to stand by and watch you watch such a brilliant frog give it give it up like that. Uh you love you so much, you, you train it so hard for so long. It wouldn't be awful if you just give it up. Trash for your you and frog kind. Just glad that you didn't actually give up. Tragedy. Now oh, other guests, truly your hearts are purer than the First drop of morning dew. I'm sorry, friend, my friend, to have done you such injustice. You should have been the winner of that match. Now, oh, come now, you proved that you were the best of us, did you not? Please listen to me. We have many competitions ahead of us, and I will gladly compete with you a hundred, a thousand times more. But this time, we must put our best frog forward to fetch the princess. That is our calling. The future of the Rainsong Pond rests upon it. As such, there is no room for error. Do you understand me? I do. Good for Bert. Th that's wonderful. Uh, well, it all seems to have turned out great. We have ourselves a real champion now, don't we? Next up, our champion shall go rescue the princess. And then our calling will be complete. Uh, not to interrupt you or anything, but that prince of yours. Yeah, so you sent a whole bunch of princes of yours, fetch her this, best frog that. Now everything's ready. Do you, you actually know where the princess is? Of course. Where we are about to go receive and rescue her. For she lives in a tower made of vines and a giant tree. In giant trees. Only the bravest, boldest, most jumpiest of frogs may evade the thorns and deep mists. Leaping atop the tower to deliver the princess from her cage. Princess? You don't mean the one in the forest, do you? Uh, that's right, we met a princess previously when we went to the kingdom of Princess and Bells. She doesn't live, live in a very, very high tower and she even has a trial to select guardians. But she can fly herself, so Paimon doesn't really think she needs saving. And she's selecting her own gardens. She doesn't seem to be waiting for anyone. Really? Wonderful. That's wonderful. That said, I didn't expect her to be able to fly. Well, that's wonderful. Then I shouldn't have to go at all to wait there. 
just to mess up such important tasks. In any case, I must confess to being a little tired. Having just jumped so far, I must rest. Hello, friend. I say, hold. Ah, dewdrops above. You shall not escape from this matter. Mr. Hurlo, I believe that we should travel to the kingdom regardless to see what, what is happening. Hmm, you may be right, but this is quite strange. The princess does live in a high tower, and yet she needs no frog to save her. The stamp forward, it seems that we must speak to the princess. Go oh, then, dear guests, please lead the way. Okay, I think the request will stop here, and now they will. What greater pleasure is there together. than the unexpected? Um, the quest. Uh, a musician. No, this was another two. Uh, no, those are that still. I uh, those one don't show up here. Uh, okay, I think there'll be another part for this quest. Let's try just going there, but I don't think this will work. I think Prince Seven just has to come meet her again after some time past. Sam for the search in the future. Uh, I wonder if she's found a hero. Okay, so it did continue. No. So we're all completely stumped. How come we're all here? Looks like I'm here now too. Oh, it's you. Such a relief that you've come. Thank you for coming, my honorable paladin. We seem to have run into a rather peculiar problem. Peculiar problem? Oh no, don't tell Paimon that the relic hasn't acknowledged Mr. Forbert either. The problem was only that I hadn't been acknowledged by Asgardian. That would actually be simpler. Let's put this. Mr. Forbert is did a champ. Jumper, that much is indisputable, but the trial he, he passed was raised some pawns to jumping contest. And when he was acknowledged as champion, it was a committee that declared him so. It is true that Her Highness resides in a town tower, and that he, in this kingdom does indeed have its own series of arduous tribes. But she clearly isn't trapped, much less needs me to jump up and rescue her. In those trials, no matter how good I was at jumping, I'd never be able to pass them. Uh, they just aren't designed for paper frogs. On oh, paper, you seem like the perfect candidate. But the details just didn't work out. What are we to do? If we can complete our, complete our calling... We keep talking about this calling of yours, and Mr. Forbert mentioned it too. What exactly is it? You haven't found the guardian and princess you were looking for? Why don't you just keep looking? Even if you don't find them right this instant, it's not like this place is gonna vanish into thin air. Our kingdom exists for its calling. It is also the only way we can save it. Likewise, the residents of Ransom Pond have sacrificed so much and are continuing to sacrifice for the princess who is nowhere to be found. Generation after generation of champions have quietly aged away, all memory of their deeds fading away into oblivion. Wait, so there are generations of generations that have died here? Because we met a few people that are here from the beginning of this cre the creation of this world. Mr. Horlo has spoken of these brave ones before, uh, weighted down by the burden of unrealized ambition, they are left with no other choice but to wane their days in obscurity. Such a fate crueler than the fall of a kingdom. Hmm. Robert, uh, we talked about this before. You said we were going to reconsider, and now we must have faith in our champion. Our champion will not back down. If our purse on a lotus leaf, 
and suddenly found myself drifting away with the current, I would do my best to make sure it didn't capsize in the middle of the river. Now that I carry the Lotus Head Bango, I will not, I cannot shirk my duty. This has nothing to do with courage, Mr. Hurlu, just duty. Uh, Paimon knew our Lotus Leaf rafting experience was a complete waste of time, spoken like a true champion, but if I do end up going overboard, you'll have to call for something. He'd definitely be better at this than I am. Uh, he's a real champion when it comes down to it, so why have I ended up being the one on the Lotus Leaf? Uh, looks like we still have to go rafting a few more times. Are you sure on one unique champion? No matter how hard you try, you're always convinced you're going to fail. You really need to worry. After all, not only did you come here entirely of your own accord, but you had the courage to shoulder a great responsibility. You were brave enough to make a choice and boldly follow through with it. And uh, listen my eyes, you are no less than of any flying squirrel. Your Highness, thank you for the praise and for your trust. Besides, I'm already on this lotus leaf, so I can get off now anyway. Uh, well, anyway, now that we have the backing of so many strong fighters, I think it's high time we headed into the cave of eerie murmurs to see what lurks in its depths. Ah, so we're going there now. I thought there was something else. Saborn, so far, uh, there are no use trying to stop me. After all, we have you. We have you ever succeeded in holding me back. Come on, line it up. This is the last clue we need to save the kingdom. But not a single princess that's gone into the cave of eerie murmurs has ever come back out again. If there's nothing in the cave of eerie murmurs, what does it matter where I return or not? But on the other hand, if there really is a clue to the salvation of the kingdom in there, then even if I were to be trapped inside, there wouldn't be such a bad thing, would it? What kind of place is this cave of eerie murmurs anyway? Why does your highness sound so serious? Oh, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Simply put, it's where those princesses of past kingdoms search for the answer. But even till the day their kingdoms vanished utterly, those princesses were never seen again. Mm, by never seen again, sure you don't mean they can swallow them alive. They disappear too. There isn't a single flying squirrel that knows. Well, we'll find out soon enough. To be safe, I'll bring the relic along with us. Who knows, it may just come in handy. Alright everyone, let's go. Given that one of you is an expert flyer and the other a champion jumper, I trust you both be able to keep up with me. Well, her eyes has flown off already. Let's catch up with Ignis. So, Lord Guardian, what can I do for you? About the kingdoms that failed to fulfill their calling. You, alright, since the princess herself has knowledge you and the paladin of the breezes and bells, it is only right that it, I tell you about such matters. Prior to the current era of the kingdom of breezes and bells, this land has known many kingdoms. Just like us, their calling was to find a guardian of the kingdom who would be acknowledged by the relic. But these kingdoms, which were established to fulfill a calling, declined and vanished before they could fulfill it. Not a single one of them managed to find a guardian who could save the whole kingdom. Vanished. So if you can't fulfill your, this calling of yours, something bad will happen. That is correct. In some cases, the subjects of the kingdom suddenly lost their voices, while in others, the, the kingdom's water supplies dried up overnight. Having lost their future, all these kingdoms have truly faded into oblivion. If you cannot fulfill our calling, this will be our fate too. In any case, I wish you good luck, Paladin. Oh, pleasure to meet you. <laughs> it seems you are a popular one indeed. Even Her Highness uh, Princess Simas knows you. About the price paid by Rain of Pond. 
such a hub topic, well, seeing as you asked, it would be rude not to give you an answer. Oh, but everything seems fine over uh, Rain So Pond. Uh, you look, you all look so happy to be jumping around and taking part in the contest. In one sense, that is so. The waters of Rain Pond have never dried up, and the contest has never been interrupted. Each community working tirelessly away, and each contestant training constantly, doing everything they can to be up to the task of saving the princess of day. But all those paper frogs endlessly laboring, they are the price that Ransom Pond has paid. From the moment they are born, our calling is to practice jumping to save the princess. Every aspect of life at Ransom Pond revolves around this. Innumerable paper frogs have sat on Ransom Pond's committee and countless champions have been chosen. But all this time we've never managed to find our princess. Generation upon generation of of frustrated champions have thus aged away, not knowing how to fulfill the calling they, that they so cherished. All they can do is watch helplessly as their once powerful legs were weak and their fine whip webbed feet gradually wither away. Uh, so, and worst of all, because our champions keep aging, we must constantly train new ones to ensure that we have the strongest paper frog ready at all times should the princess suddenly appear. So Ransom Pond's contest continues without any sign of an ending, uh, yet now none remembers the names of this, those champions who thought, thought they would too once cherish the calling and up aging away in helpless impotence. As Princess Sima has put it, weighted down by the burden of unrealized ambition, they are left with no other choice but to end their days in obscurity. Such a fate is crueler than the fall of Kingdom. That's enough about all that. The atmosphere is suddenly feeling rather heavy. Let us place our trust in forebears and Princess Simas. I'm sure they'll be able to do something about it. Uh, have something else? Wait, where's Tumpy? Oh, that good fellow. He said he was going for a stroll to get some fresh air, and he's practicing his diving as we speak. If only Stumpy could share some of his relaxed mindset with Farbert, even a fifth of it would do. Uh, thank you. Honorable Guardian, what can I do for you about the kingdom, following the calling? Oh, alright. Wait, that's what I... Oh, okay, I'm talking to both of you. Okay, I thought I was talking to you with then the other. I will talk to the other. Okay. okay. It's where I got that. Yeah. Didn't the princess take us to the cave of here moon moments before? I'm sure she heard a strange voice while we were there. Mm, just... To let you guys know, us paper frogs are very good at jumping in caves. Why? Don't worry, Mr. Farbert, Paimon might have, might have just been hearing things. I am a voice, but a voice is not life. Direction is only born of contradictions, and only interaction is dialogue. There it is again. Do not fear, these voices will not harm us, they are simply lamenting their own past. Lamenting the past? Are these the princesses' voices? To be precise, both princess and princess, uh, what they have in common is, they are all voices of, from fallen kingdoms. They came in search of answers, but found nothing. All they could do was stay and lament their fate in vain. You know this place well, you must have come here many times before. You show great intuition, as one would expect of a paladin. That is correct, I have come here often since my ascension. After all, compared to all those princesses and princes from the past, there is nothing special about me at all. It was wishful thinking indeed for me to have met, imagined that a miracle might suddenly happen, and that I find our true guardian just like that. But for the sake of my kingdom, I had to keep searching for a way to fulfill my calling. I could not simply stand by and watch it fade away. 
So I looked everywhere, but found nothing. Finally though, I narrowed down my search to the Cave of Eerie Murmurs. But because this cave has never been thoroughly investigated, and so as not to drive stubborn so fresh. I'm saying this name each time in a different way. Souffle. Stubborn Souffle. Sick with worry for or cause their voices should go hoarse. I have never entered the cave of Ear Murmurs itself. Now, for the future of the kingdom and all our age champions, I have no choice but to go in. Don't be afraid, your highness. Not only do you have the super strong Indus and the champion jumper Mr. Fobert to back you up, but also the uh, season floater Paimon too. No matter what happens, we'll make sure to stay safe. Right, Inus? Mr. Fobert? Fobert? At your service, your highness? Leave it all to me. We uh, got your back, I think. I mean, we've hopefully got your back. Seriously, caves really aren't designed for jumping in. It's alright, Mr. Champion. We still have plenty of time to prepare. After all, we need to figure out how to get into the cave first. <coughs> that is my coming handy. Ah, uh, that's why we need him. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to do anything anyway. Then come everyone, let us enter. It's so chilly around here, such a strange vibe. Paimon was just glad I haven't seen anything weird. Wait a sec. Uh, what's that carving on the wall over there? It looks like a story. What's it about? After setting up the tribe itself, the princess awaited her guardian within the kingdom. Ah, there are pages as well. I think I recall this story from the kingdom's records. In the legend, it said that despite the passing of much time, there is uh, still there came no sign of a guardian, and it seemed that the kingdom resources would soon run dry. The princess, whose name was Seoya, therefore made a decision. She let the kingdom's people fall into deep slumber and seal off all its land except the tower, where she alone remained to await the coming of the guardian. What became of this princess? The guardian that she awaited never came. In the end, she said to have come to the cave of eerie murmurs alone, then vanished from the world without a trace. It is true that this princess showed great courage, but I cannot say that I agree with her approach. As I see it, by deciding to simply wait there while her people slept in blissful ignorance, she consigned her kingdom to an unknown fate. Instead, she should have taken the initiative by calling upon her people to unite as one, seeking out this garden together. If she had done this, even if all their efforts had turned out to be in vain, at least she would have known that she done all she could. <laughs> it's, it's just as the last line of the story says, story follow rules, unfolding in cyclical patterns, but each should follow its own course. Your Highness, it hasn't come to it that yet. Yeah, come on, there's still hope. And who knows, there might be some important clues left for us to find. Forgive me, I seem to have gotten a little carried away. Anyway, let's keep searching. Looking around, seems like we haven't completed the trials in the cave of your murmurs yet. Being a cave of murmurs, we complete different. Stand your guard, everyone. Let's proceed slowly. Uh, am I supposed to or two? 
read that. Assistance for saying goodbye. It's so glaringly obvious. Oh. The irritating thing is that it is both reasonable and obvious. Can we read that? No, really. Those leaves, a few drops. What the? Why has this story been carved on the wall? What is it? Someone carved someone's carved a story here that goes. Once upon a time, there was a paper frog who wished he had a pair of wings. He prayed to the goddess, who told him that if he could jump higher than all the other frogs, he could have his wings. Let us ask. So, if he could already jump higher than all the other frogs, why would he need wings? Maybe just a hyper hyperbole. Hyperbole. Uh, no, this champion's name is actually recorded in the committee's register. This paper frog, whose name was Cibralus, who once won the championship seven times in a row, no frog was his equal. Uh, his symbol was a pair of wings made of lotus leaves, so they dubbed him Wings Cibralus. Seven times in a row? I've heard you won the championship many times in a row too, Mr. Farbert. Me? Yes, I won it seven times and it's number six. But I've been no match for this champion. Back in those days, they had to figure it out themselves without any experience to roll. If my generation of frogs have jumped higher than others, it is merely because by jumping up from the shoulders of giants. Uh, there he goes again, putting himself down as usual. Uh, so what happened to that champion? Uh, this I do not know. According to the committee's records, in the last jumping contest he ever took part, Cyrus came second. Second, so that means... Indeed it does. Given that he no longer felt up to the task of rescuing the princess, Cyrus announced his retirement. Then and there, uh, he told his friend that the jumping contest no longer held any meaning for him, and that unless he rediscovered the meaning someday, he would never again compete. From that day forth, no once was his name ever again mentioned in the records of Ransom Pond. So, just like those princes and princesses, there was one point in time after which this champion simply vanished from the world. That's right. All in all, this story really doesn't seem to like a promising omen. For a, moment, a minute, the last line of the story is also the story follows rules, avoiding cyclical patterns, but it should follow its own course. What does this line keep repeating? We better complete the rest of the trials first. Yeah, it's alright. Let's focus on the puzzles before us. I wonder where it will lead us in the end. Uh, what's all this in here? Looks like Scale has no intention of just giving answers, but rather plans on testing us instead. Mm, the road to success is never straight, huh? Another trial, let's do this. I'm a bit tired. I just want you. Ah, I can't let them go? I'm a bit curious, but. I want to play the thing. Thank you, then let's go take a look at this final trial.
that. We create team, we search chain from my honorable power team. This guy didn't drag all down. Mm, when the candles light up, weird. Uh, that was me, we passed this trial, huh? Uh, that one went all pretty smoothly. Who's king of trials now? That's right, this guy. Uh, practice makes perfect. Oh, you are in such good shape. If only I was as talented as you are. I thought I would have to make him jump. Uh, did you hear that? Stories, follow rules, or follow patterns. Once upon a time, there was a paper frog who wished he had a pair of wings. He prayed for to the goddess who told him that he could jump higher. Long ago, the prince who personally set up a trial in the kingdom. Who personally set up a trial in the kingdom. She waited and waited and waited. Oh, guardian, where are thou? Mm, the paper's talking. These words... That's not really that weird. We've been talking to paper for a while now. Another paper frog, just like me. Another useless champion, with squandered ears and a pair of worthless wither wings. Wait, surely you can be. I am an evaporated dewdrop, a pair of wings too weak for flight. The name Sibrelos is no longer one I am fit to bear. It is a great honor to meet you, your highness princess Se Seoya. Uh, it is an honor to meet you too, your highness. You, yet another stranger, another princess. So, I was guessing they're the champion and princess mentioned in the story of, on the wall. They just look like two manuscripts. It is an honor to meet you both. You have resided in this cave for a long time now. You, so you should know why we are here. Your Highness, have you found the answer you were looking for? Where is the guardian we were looking for? Great champion, where are the princess that us paper frogs are supposed to save? You should go back, there are no answers here. Only question after question. No river awaits, and the lotus leaves do not uh, exist for us. The pond has never seen victors, laurel, uh, nor a princess. Stories follow rules, following suitable patterns, such a futile expectation, when will the cycle end? Keep waiting, keep waiting, uh, there are no answers here, only question after question. The pen that wrote these words has not alighted back upon the page, yet the ink of fate has long dried up. Neither the guardian nor the period that marks the end shall appear. Thus it shall always be, until now, but it should follow its own course. This is destiny's inexplicable hope, when will the path ahead review itself? What are they talking about? Pemon doesn't get it. Whatever it is, doesn't sound too promising. Uh, they might as well have said nothing. No, not promising. But why? No river awaits, and the lotus leaves do not exist for us. That makes it sound like uh, Rainsome Pond is already. Neither the garden nor the pure that marks the end shall appear. Anyway, we shouldn't jump to conclusions so soon. We haven't even completed the trial yet. Alright, giving up before the contest has even ended seems like a bad etiquette indeed. Let's take care of the trials first. Yeah. Let's say positive, maybe there will be a pleasant surprise waiting for us. Uh, no. Do I have to see her? Oh. There are more here. Uh. Give me stuff. Try to jump over here. 
Ah, a headshot. Seems like we passed all the trials, right? Passed the trials, but nothing seems to have happened. I bought the relic, but he hasn't reacted at all. Are you really meant to just keep waiting here? Well, what exactly are we waiting for? It's not like some kind of gods gonna suddenly swoop down and tell us what to do, is it? What we really need to do is wait. All we can do is wait. Meaning lies in wait. Meaning lies in waiting. The future lies unknown. When do they appear? They're insisting that we wait like that? What are we even waiting for? Perhaps they don't know either, which is why they've been waiting all this time. So long that they turned into manuscripts. We are echoes with nowhere to return, existence that do not exist, unfinished cap chapters of blank paper, as you are. As are you. Together, let us go back to where we belong. Stories follow rules of folding cyclical patterns, each follows its own course. Hey, you piles of rotten paper, why do you just keep telling us to wait? Your Highness, waiting will get us nowhere. Huh, so that's it. I knew I was in the, in the wrong place. Your Highness, Princess Seoya, I have my answer. To the rest of you, it is time for us to part ways. Thank you all for everything you have done. Now it is clear to me that the answer lies not in the cave of your murmurs. When I first arrived, I was afraid of, I would have to pay a heavy price to find a way to save the kingdom here. In the end, the cave of your murmurs holds nothing more than a pile of old manuscripts, deceiving themselves by waiting. It is a great relief to know that hope still lies elsewhere. Future lies no meaning lies in waiting. No, your highness. Meaning lies in the unknown. Waiting leads only to waiting. I most certainly will not save the kingdom using such a method. If the guardian does not come, I will go in search of them. If I cannot find them in my kingdom, I will search the rest of the world instead. If they are not to be found in these worlds, then I shall keep searching beyond it. Even if my kingdom is destined to fall, I wish to witness its final moments. Way its ending is written. Such blindness, such impetuosity, such frivolity, such ignorance, such superficiality, such impatience. Say what you will, but as you yourself just put it, stars follow rules and follow its patterns, but it should follow its own course. If your path lies here in any endless waiting, then mine lies instead on the road ahead. Uh, can I say something? Uh, if you were to deem it acceptable, I would like to go along with your highness too. Wow, someone seems pretty motivated all of a sudden. After all, if I could help your highness find your guardian, that could also be interpreted as saving the princess. I am the champion of Ransom Pound, even if I do it for Ransom Pound, I must continue to fulfill my duty. If you are willing to help, then on behalf of the entire kingdom of breezes and bells, I thank you. That is most right. I will, of course, still have to ask the committee's opinion, especially Horrelow and Stumpy. As you know, I always seem to cause trouble. We believe in you. Our champion of champions. Great, so... Where... What's next? Uh... Your Highness, the relic next to you, it's lighting up. Hmm. Oh! That's why you're doing that. How come the relic set it up? 
so that's what it should follow is of course paint I need to try to figure out something else that Pemo hasn't Looks like to me you're saying we first need to find a lost sleep on your own and drift alone um, but the bar on the consider what happened if you in the water just climb back and improve our courage by recommend rest just like you did did I? Thanks to your kindness, your highness, but I believe it proved that is too much dialogue. Her highness is her highness. Okay. Her highness flying along with a bunch of people and like frogs. Our relics are in your hands. Our guard is coming. In. All the news we finally fly around without having to worry. I don't have to climb that tree there. Hopeless ahead of your future lies outside, meaning lies beyond the end of the sentence. Virtualize dialogue, louder uh, survive. Those are the dialogues I wish I could see back the history. We are champion, hey, Corbert. You can see Corbert too. Corbert's flying, he's incredible. Over here is a champion. You will wave your, with your chip of feet. Good fellows pushing. Don't embarrass him any longer. Bon courage for Bert. So that's what happens. Fascinating. Uh, stories for rules. Farewell. Oh. Get here. Ah, the departure in the boat. Oh, my leg it is still on the ground. I can barely feel it more. How far your feet are still firmly on the ground, Mr. Champion? And they're in better condition than any of us are. Those princes from the past, they seem to have left true. I hope that they'll never return to the cave of your murmurs. Uh, since our trip to the cave of your murmurs wasn't for nothing after all. With the relic lit up, there's hope for your highness kingdom again. That is indeed so. The fact that the relic has lit up may means that it has found a guardian worthy of acknowledgement. It seems the guardian that the relic was looking for was not a valid warrior in the usual sense. A true guardian who is worthy of acknowledgement is one who always follows their heart, someone who pushes forward relentlessly in spite of their fear. It turns out that this relic, which we've been treating like a problem, was actually the answer all along. Those manuscripts that were waiting in the cave. They've been waiting for their path to appear, waiting all this time. But waiting leads only to more waiting. No one can find a solution to a problem simply by searching within the problem itself. Uh, like, you wouldn't be able to pick a leaf from a tree if you were standing on the leaf itself. Mm, sounds complicated, but I'm just feeling dizzy now. Anyway, none of them were acknowledged by the Red Chaos Guardians. Your Highness and Mr. Farberg were tough. Were though. Uh, so now the relic has it up and we found our guardian. Doesn't that mean that the problem is solved, your highness? Well, you could say that, but I still have managed to figure out exactly why it lit up. Looks like Sabor and Souffle will be doing some more research for me. Oh, and now that the guardian has been chosen, doesn't that mean that the relic's trial has lots of meaning too? It'd be a shame to tear it all down. I still like to have another go too. No. I will keep the trial in place, but it will now be used to train guardians rather than to choose them. If every flying squirrel were to become a guardian someday, then no matter what difficulties the kingdom of Breezes and Bells face, we could overcome them together. Huh. I've been waiting for to do this for a long, long time. Just a pity that the relic refused to light up sooner. And that uh, Saborn and Souffle stood in my way. 
Now that I've been acknowledged by the relic, I shall do whatever I wish. That's why you're the princess, your highness. No, no, no. Her highness' title should be, should not be, guardian princess of the kingdom of princess and bells. So, um, your highness would be all right if I uh, took part in the training in your kingdom. But you are already a champion. You really, you're really up for anything now, huh? Uh, no, no. Didn't you hear that sound just now? The voice that was speaking. This trial that I must face to serve Princess Simus and fulfill your calling. No. Whose voice was it? it was the same voice of the manuscripts that claimed to be Cybrilus in the cave of your murmurs. Surely the great champion himself doesn't actually believe that I can fulfill uh, Rain Song Pond's calling. But Princess Simus doesn't need me to save her. If anything, I'm the one who needs her help. So to him you could do it. Uh, no, I didn't. Or rather, he had no intention of hearing my opinion anyway. But seeing as it's for the calling of race on pawns, what choice do I have? You're saying you would like to undergo the trial? Then of course you're welcome too. I couldn't be more delighted to hear that the champion of race on pawns is willing to serve my kingdom. Besides, I have plans to travel far, far away in the future, and I was actually just about to invite you to come along with me. After all, there are bound to be places in this world where the wind doesn't blow, and when time comes, we'll have to rely on those champion legs of yours. Really, then you know, I'll try my best not to make any mistakes, though I've never tried jumping with anyone riding on my back before. Then you have to think harder for the moment. And to the two of you, thank you for all your help, all the help you've given me in my kingdom. So there were, there are still many mysteries yet to be solved. Why did we need to find a garden? And why would a kingdom fall into decay by itself? And why would Ransom Pond have such a calling? But at least the kingdom has been saved. So now I have more time to contemplate these questions. Uh, is, don't you think that those manuscripts in the cave of eerie murmurs seem to be related to the story, to a story you heard before? The legend that Nilo told us about, the gods of fate who used ink to compose her stories. And do you know something about all this? Well, it's a long and complicated... Uh, actually, it's not a long or complicated story. To tell Prince Simmons for birth to serve the gods of fate. So basically, everything you've been through is a story written by the gods of fate. Alright, not that we've really become characters in a story, but seeing as the goddess wrote us in, why didn't she give us an ending? First, those poor souls in the cave and now us. Mm. We've all been through so much. So that must mean that it was also the gods of fate who came up with the line Stories follow rules and follow cyclical patterns, but each should follow its own course. I need some time to think about these matters more deeply. My loyal paladin, please take this gift as token of my gratitude. These are the only treasures I brought with me. If you have time, please come back to visit the kingdom of breezes and bells again. I believe that you may have some questions for me. But first, I must rest well and think hard. Okay, that was a lot. Ah, something with which to commemorate this occasion. I thought they would depart on the boat. Hmm. Is she back there? Okay, she's not here yet. Well, there's the other quest there, but I have no idea how long that would take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'll stop here. Just for the quest. And uh, the next time I'll do the quest and probably the challenges. Okay.
try for Naga. No. Still none here. Yeah. Alright. That was a lot of reading. Uh, I'm off. 